This is Seasons of Discontent with your hosts, Rick Snyder and Matt Combs. Welcome to Seasons of Discontent, Season 9, Episode 14, brought to you by Rick Snyder's Washington on social media. And I'm Rick Snyder. I'm Matt. And we're back discussing all things Washington sports and life as part of the mighty Rick Snyder empire. So please like, share, subscribe, comment, and hit that dollar sign. All right, Matt, we start off on the Friday show, just no wasting around. I say Philadelphia 31, Washington 10. I'm kind of with you on that one. (laughs) I'll just to be different. I'll say thirty four ten. Washington will get a garbage touchdown towards the end. But this did this Philly team just keeps keeps getting stronger and stronger. They just traded for Kevin Byard. I mean, <laughs> you know, I, I just I don't understand how GMs around the league pick up the phone and it says Howie Roseman and they just continue to get fleeced. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, uh, Philly's gonna win. Philly is Philly is probably the best team in the NFC. Uh, you know, after Sunday night or Monday night, we saw the 49ers go down to the her cousins um yeah philly's 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 pretty good and you know it's philly i think it's got a little bit of a chip on their shoulder because washington almost beat them you know and they went up to philly and embarrassed the eagles for a while yeah but i think i think honestly rick that's kind of what we've seen with washington with the bears game and and even the giants game you know the bears game oh we haven't won a game in 14 games okay well you know we're just going to walk in there and win this game over the Bears because they haven't won a game in 14 games. Nope, you got punched in the mouth. Same thing with the Giants. Oh, we're missing eight starters and da-da-da-da-da. Eh, they're going to punch us in the mouth too. So I yeah, think that, that was the situation. I just don't think the Eagles were prepared. Like the time that Washington went up to Detroit and Detroit had that winless season and then finally won a game. You know, people have asked me all week, who's the next coach? Well, the mighty eight ball says well, – I got a cue ball, not an eight ball. Um – I'm going to go Ben Johnson of Detroit. But the interesting part is who would be his offensive coordinator? Well, his quarterback's coach with the Lions is Mark Brunel. <laughs> that kind of scares the hell out of me, <laughs> you know, to be honest. I mean, Brunel's great career was in Jacksonville, not here when he came, but Joe Gibbs wanted him, and it was a grinding, you know, few years. I don't know. I think, you know, Johnson's going to be the hot one. Hey, this is a new ownership group. Just spent six billion bucks. They can spend some money on a coach if they want. Yeah, and you know, it's it's not the worst place in the league. And if you you can turn around in Washington, you can be a national guy. So versus you know going to some backwater team like Arizona. So I, I don't know. That's just my guess. People ask me this every every five minutes. Who's I'll throw an, I'll throw an interesting name out to you for next the next head coach. Andy Reid. Sean McVay. Ooh, when he come well, I mean, one of those things about would they come back here? Well, there's no coming back here because Danny's gone. So then it's like free to come back. Oh, I'd like that one if they pulled it off, but I don't see it. But once you've been to LA, man, he's going into TV after this. Yeah, coming back he's here. He's only like 35, 36 I- years old. He's got a Super Bowl. He can come back. Look, it's it right. The story writes itself. He comes back to Washington and and you know, the place where he cut his teeth and he can turn them around and Dan's gone. And, you know, I don't know. I, I just, I, I don't know. I mean, I, that that's kind of the interesting name, it, you know, even if we have to trade for him, you know, I, I well, just think that's an interesting name to keep an eye on. Cause we've all heard that the Rams are looking to move on from him possibly. So, you know, it's a possibility. And the Vikings look to maybe fire their coach. It was from here. He was Sean McVay 2.0. I mean, they really were a lot alike. And I wasn't surprised he was doing well. But, uh, you know, Minnesota's got to make some changes, and they're stuck trying to figure out what to do with Kirk. And they got their problems. We got ours. But, yeah, I mean, every day people just ask me, it's like, oh, yes, it's a secret mission already done. I don't know. You know, it, it magic. You know, could magic coach? I don't know. I think the bigger be- question is who is going to be the GM of this team because that's the biggest need. I mean, I would – I would look for a first. I'll look for an offensive coordinator for a coach. But before that, the GM find a guy who's been the assistant GM for a few years of a team that built itself up, you know. And there's several guys around the league like that. Like San Francisco has one, uh, Seattle has one, Philly has. There's there's some guys. I would go get one of those guys. Yeah, you know, find 
find me a 38 year old GM like that. Go you find know, your that, Scott Pioli. Go find your guy that sat underneath, you know, a genius, learned his craft, and then moved on and built a winner. Yeah, and that's that's who they need. And I, I know they're already working on a list. You know, oh. I mean, you'd be crazy not to. You know, and and because these are new owners, you know, they're new to the league. It's going to take a little extra time. It wouldn't surprise me if they were relying a little on magic, but just from the sporting knowledge of these things. I mean, listen, the owner owns an NBA and an NHL team, so he's not new to sports. Mm-hmm. You know? And he had the reputation of crashing, burning, and rebuilding. Well, <laughs> whether he wanted to or not, that might be what happens here. I don't know if they can get to 6-11, and 11, maybe. I mean, this team will surprise you and win a game that they shouldn't. But then they at the end of the last month, whoa, man, the last month is going to be a boom you know, kind of thing. So they got to win. They're going to win three games. They got to do it in the next five or six. And I don't know that they will. I'm after seeing the, two. I'm seeing two. Yeah, I mean, Philly's next. I don't see him win there. Then they play New England. You know, that, there's a uh, possibility with New England. Yeah, that's, a, that's I don't know, because New England beat Buffalo. And I thought, where'd that come from? Yeah, but this was that wacky weekend in football where, like I said, the Vikings beat the 49ers, the Bills lost to, or yeah, to the, to the, um, to the Patriots, you know, that, that Cleveland Indianapolis game was back and forth. You know, this was just one of those wacky weekends where these big upsets happened. Yeah. I went four and nine picking on my Saturday morning show. So I guess I lost my shirt and well, we know how that goes. I'm gonna have my only fans uh, outfit on for this one. Maybe I should wear the Santa mask too. You know. Hey, let's hit, let, hey, let's hit that tip button to keep Rick's shirt on. <laughs> Ooh, that'd be good too. Yeah, you can do it that way also. Now wear the Santa mask or something. It's like major. It'll be like Major League, but reversed. You remember how every time they won a game, they ripped a piece of clothing off of the owner? Uh, yeah, let's. Uh, we could do the reverse. Every tip you make, we put a piece of a piece of clothing back on Rick. Yeah, I'll have like a winter hood and, uh, you know, a hat and yeah. my scarf, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. All right. So we didn't get to talk about it earlier in the week, but I think that they should play Emmanuel Forbes over St. Juice. Now, a different spot, but they said that Forbes could. I think Danny Johnson's playing much better than St. Juice. That's what that comes down to. St. Juice has not had a good year. He's been getting beat a lot playing too much off the ball, like the whole secondary. I mean, to me, this secondary only survives as well as it does, as well as the front line plays. And even then, they, they've they been getting beat too much. The front line's been, you know, last game, it was Chase's best game. Of, but they, they get gashed for too many big plays. And teams just seem to find open receivers all the time. And it's often St. Juice, too. So I would, if you got, you got to play Forbes, you got to get him going. You have St. Juice is a nice story, and he's a and he's a nice little player in some respects. Uh, I like him, you know, as a baller. But you know, Danny Johnson can handle one end, put Forbes on the other. I mean, St. Juice in in any other team is probably what the third or fourth corner. Yeah, like, he's a good dude. You know, we've seen progression with him, which is not very you know he's he's one of the few on this team that actually has progressed um yeah i mean you have to see what you have in emmanuel forbes that is your first round draft pick that is your ball hawking corner that is supposed to be picking off five to six balls a season and possibly returning two or three of them to the house i mean you just have to see what you have with these guys this year is over there's no more chasing chasing philly and no more chasing dallas and no more trying to get in the playoffs that's done it is done you have lost to too many bad teams. You know, it, it's just, it's time. I hate to say it. I'm going to use the old shanty adage. Maybe it's time to start the evaluation process. Yeah. I, Ron kept talking about corrections. And I'm like, God, he's running the department of corrections on this place. Well, next week is trade deadline, October 31st. I think it's around noon. So it won't mess with your trick or treating. What are you going as this year? <laughs> a, a dad. <laughs> oh. Oh, a, pub, da, a, a dad bod? Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm handing out candy and drinking a beer in my front yard while my kids go trick-or-treating. I I was a forerunner of dad bods. I was one before long before it was chic. But, uh, okay. And I'm in a brand new house, uh, first Halloween. So I think I'll have to have, I don't even know how many kids are coming around here at all. That big um, old house, you better get some king-sized. Yeah, I got to get the big candy bars. But do I have three kids? Or fifth? Kids don't come to trick-or-treating as much as they used to because... 
like it's, I, all, I, it's all the it, trunk or treats now i went to one of those in the rain with my grandkids the other day um but you know they had a bride hand out candy and i said you know when i wore that people thought it was dumb but you look good you know it's like uh that got her going but they don't, you know, they do more things. They went to the karate studio for, you know, trick or treat thing. So they don't go house to house anymore, and that's fine with me. Uh, so we have to do the show earlier next week. But, you know, anyway, this game coming up, <clears throat> I kind of figured it, it tells us a lot. Let's say you lose this game. Now you're three and five. Okay, you're not buyers. You're sellers. Mm-hmm. Do they sell Sweat and Young? And people are like, well, you could get a fifth, maybe a fourth for Young. Well, you're going to get a third on compensation pick if you keep him. So the bidding has to be a three or else it's not worth it at all. Ron Moss will just play the guys because uh, he's not going to be here to spend that three anyway. And nobody's going to give you a two for uh, guys that are free agents in eight weeks. That's not happening. So I don't know that they, they end up getting rid of either of them just because what's the point? You know, now, could they, to me, if your name isn't Terry McLaurin, and I mean that, you're a trade bait. All right. You and Sam Howe. I don't care. We can finish the season with Jake Fromm. Um, uh, I would say there's a couple names besides just Terry. Uh, Terry Robinson. Um, I'd trade Robinson if you gave me something. What's Robinson really done? And I'm disappointed to say that. Now, he had that room, but he's had a couple plays, and I thought he was going to be really good running, but he doesn't seem to push past that pile much either. He's you know, actually he, been very good in the past game. I mean, I just that that truck stick against uh, Atlanta for the touchdown that was that was a hell of a play. That's um, a one. You know, I would that's... keep I would keep Robinson. I would keep obviously Terry's your captain. Um, I would not get rid of Deron Payne. I feel like Deron Payne is obviously he's a year younger, um, and he's a a little bit better of a player than John Allen. I know John Allen is your defensive leader, but. You know, obviously the big names to watch are Sweat and Young. Um, I, I don't think they do anything because Ron knows he's gone. You know, they, I doubt that they give him carte blanche to to trade anybody. Yeah, I just I don't see much happen. It's it's good to talk about it, but if they win, well, they're four and four, and I guess we could sit here and pretend, you know, for another couple games uh, of what's going on. But I just don't see it. But the NFL is starting to do some trading around the league. You know. It, Last year was really surprising. I think there was nine trades. Mm-hmm. And usually you never see one. You know, well, we've already seen one. Like I mentioned, the Eagles yeah. traded traded with Tennessee for Kevin Byard. Yeah, we're seeing we've seen several trades in the last few days. So, you know, I could see something happening, but I don't see really for Washington making a difference of any sort uh on that. So if somebody wants to come get Chris Rodriguez, I'm willing to listen to an offer. Mm-hmm. I like what he's done for the limited amount they've given him. I don't know. It, like you said, this season just looks like it's shot shot to pieces already, and it, it didn't have to be like this, but you know, part of this is a little bit of Dan Snyder. They couldn't make any real money moves in the offseason because he's selling. That was the same thing that happened when Cook died, and yep. they got strung by that for a while. So, And that's where I was going to say, I think, Rick, the, the, the time frame of the sale was too late, obviously, for, for Harris and Co. to come in here and completely gut the place. Um, you know, the plan had always been to kind of play this year out. I don't think there's any astronomical changes that are going to be made. Although the, the move to Eric Bieniemy was a pretty big move and, you know, but that was also made pre sale, you know, the sale was talked about and, and being, being negotiated. However, it, you know, we, we hadn't heard any names. So, you know, obviously the Bieniemy move was a big one, but, um, you know, this was just kind of a let's get through the year, let's see what kind of team we have, and go on from there. All right, I think I lost Rick. <laughs> um, I guess I'll go ahead and wrap it up. Uh, for Rick, I'm Matt. This is uh, Seasons of Discontent. Bye. Thanks for listening to Seasons of Discontent with your hosts, Rick Snyder and Matt Cones. 